Opo, yung isa lang talagang napansin ko, wala kami, wala kami present sa akin. Yun. Opo. Pero yung, yung sa akin na po, ah, ay, ngayon po, pinapos, sabi nga, first time po na wala ko doon sa fiesta rin, sabi ko, ay, pupunta ako doon, mas pipiliin ko yun, kasi alam ko na yun yung katotohanan eh. Pero yung, yung, parang may guilt sa akin na, ako yung, yung nagmamanage doon, ako yung inaasahan ng mga tao na ganoon, tapos wala ako doon. Pero alam ko rin na mali. <laughs> Hindi <laughs> <laughs> kaya nga, siguro ang pwede mong magawa ngayon, now that you know, you thank the Lord na at least nakita mo. So, and uh, probably what you can do, you ask the bishop to send your priest there. No, kasi mahirap naman na sabi, huwag kang mumunta dito na walang papalit. Hmm. Na may vacuum yan. Noong so, yeah, um, so may mga missionary po na sila doon sa Pangasinan yata yun, may nakarating po doon sa amin at sumama nga rin ako Um, nagmisa po for 14 years na po after 14 years na misa ng pare. Kasi yung yung ano ko lang po nung tinanong ko po yung mother, mother is yung tawag ko sa kanya. Kasi tinanong ko po siya, nagmimisa siya. Sabi ko, pwede po bang kumuha tayo ng pare? Kasi gusto ko po talaga na may pare pag fiesta. Sabi niya ako daw mag-organize. Okay lang daw sa kanya. Sabi ko na hindi ako. Okay sa kanya po na may bumimisa na pare. Di nung may pare po na pumunta doon, may mga naalala pa ako pare yung mga missionary yata yun. Um, Nagmimisa sila, kasama siya. Ay, hindi ko po alam kung ito ang pare yun o pare-parean na. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya nga, I think, I think these people naman, yung auntie mo, I think may openness naman yan. Kapag talagang may pare, na pwede naman na siya yung maging mother. <laughs> maging manang, maging manang sa, sa, sa lugar, hindi ba? That's why, this is a big challenge to us. Na marami, mag, I don't think that's the only place, ako, so many places, na aabot ng iba na hindi natin no? So this can be a progression. No? Siguro pa po. In a way, let's thank the Lord that the faith was kept alive during that time. Pero kailangan sana ma-purify. No? Hindi ko po kasi alam ko na yung action na gagawin ko kasi... Kaya nga, hingin mo sa obispo na magpadala ng pari roon. O kaya sa paris priest ng lugar, biskahin naman yung lugar. So, isa po kasi mo, ano doon, Bishop, hindi po alam ng mga tao doon na yung chapel na yun, yung babae na yun na nagbimisa sa amin, hindi nga to ito. Hindi ba, le, ang, ang, ang pari na lang ang magsabi. Na kapag may pari na roon, makikita naman nila yung different. Kapag may pari na roon. No? My question about our discussion this morning. So this regards the discussion on particularity and universality of salvation on the reign of God. And then you said, particularly salvation comes from the Jews because Jesus himself is a Jew. But then it does not mean exclusive for them because salvation is universal. And this has a lot to do with today's efforts for the church to engage in the dialogue. So we can, we can gain much from the idea of universality or salvation. Now my question is this, how could we balance the teaching of the church that salvation comes from Jesus Christ and the teaching that salvation is universal for those who do not believe in Jesus Christ? Especially sa Mindanao, yung simbahan or yung church in Mindanao is constantly engaging into dialogue with many uh, beliefs and beliefs, many religions, especially Islam and other other beliefs, especially sa katong mga, yung mga ano po, yung mga cultural and yung mga lusman. That's why uh, we believe that salvation can come only from Jesus. He saves all by His death. All the sins are forgiven. No, he is the source of all forgiveness, even of those who do not believe in Him. Even of those who do not believe in Him. If they are saved, they will be saved by Jesus. What is the imperative for us is that to proclaim Him. Whether people accept Him or not, that depends on them. But if to present to Him, we have to present Him to the others. 
and represent the right teaching. The work of salvation is not our work. It's, not, it's the work of God. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. But it makes use of human intervention. <coughs> the same as salvation came from God, but He made use of the Jewish people. He made use of the Jews to make it come to us. That's why it should not make us uh, uh, comfortable in the sense na okay lang yan, di ka tama sila, huwag na natin kipahayan. I mean, in fact, we will be more responsible for it. We will really have the great responsibility, mapananagutan natin yan, that we did not proclaim Him. So, that uh, universal aspect of salvation should make us strive all the more that's why uh, Paul Francis was there, go out to the peripheries, don't stay in the center. Reach out to the others so that they can hear also the good news. And we present, our duty is to present the good news and to live the good news in a joyful way, and God will make the way for them to be saved. Now, before we leave and go to the topic, I just want to stress the idea that uh, 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 the Old Testament is the best commentary to the New Testament. So you cannot understand fully the New Testament without knowledge of the Old Testament. It is the preparation used by God, used by the Holy Spirit for the coming of Jesus before and even up to now. That's why you have to stress more our understanding about the, the New about the Old Testament. And in our readings, uh, usually there is a relationship between the first reading and then the Gospel reading. And the first reading, which is the Old Testament reading, are chosen no, because of the Gospel readings, so because of the Gospel reading. If you connect them, and even the homilies, yung mga pari ng dito, yung mga katikista, when you present the Gospel, relate that to the Old Testament. To show the progression, or to show the diversity, or to show the fulfillment in the New Testament. Unfortunately, many of our own teachings and many of the catechism classes are only on the gospel. At hindi nila relate sa Old Testament, not even to the rest of the New Testament writings. So yan yung hawon sa ating ngayon. We can understand and appreciate better the New Testament if we know the Old Testament. So challenge is to you to know the Old Testament. And you can use that in the liturgy. Okay? So the next theme, koinonia. I have chosen this theme because this year is the year of communion. The Paris as communion. What do you mean by communion? I prefer to use the Greek word koinonia. No, because koinonia is much richer than our idea of communion. In fact, communion is only one of the meanings of koinonia. No? Koinonia. So what are the various meanings of koinonia? One meaning is fellowship. And many Bibles translate that as fellowship. Fellowship is to make ourselves as fellows. Magkabarkada. Kamaraderi. Hindi tayo magkaiba. No, magka-fellow tayo. No, although in our uh, usual understanding, fellowship means good time together. Nag-fellowship sila, nag-pitch sila. Nag-fellowship sila, nag-party sila. No, but that's just one of the meanings of koinonia. Fellowship, we are uh, magkabarkada o camaraderie. Another meaning could be partnership. So koinonia is a partnership. So here with the idea of the partnership, that means that we are partners. May kanya-kanya tayong tumulit. We bear the burden together. We are partners. 
So it's not just that you do and then I just receive. So it's a partnership. So there is a partnership in the koinonia. We all have a part to play in the partnership. Another concept of uh, koinonia is sharing. So the koinonia is the sharing. So we give. It's not just receiving. So it's a sharing. We share in our work. Now we share in the graces. We share in our blessings. That's a koinonia. Another concept of koinonia is participation. So it's a participatory church. We participate. And we can ask people to participate if we give space for them to participate. That means we listen to their suggestions. We listen to their ideas. No, we allow them also to work. And not just uh, na susunod lang sila sa atin. No, participation. Another idea is communion. Yan. This is uh, the parish is a communion. So, so communion, that means we are one together. We are one together. Okay? So in the Acts of the Apostles, which is an important way to understand what communion is, what koinonia is, so we have this important passage, 242. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. So we have four sources of unity of the Christian community in the early church. They're one because they share in the apostles' teaching. They have a common understanding. There's a common faith. So if you want to have communion, you should also strengthen formation. You cannot have communion and then believe in different things. No. And uh, we believe in the teachings of the apostles. That's why the apostles will be teaching them. Why the apostles? Because the apostles had a direct uh, uh, experience of the Lord. So they can tell us what the Lord wants to tell us. Fellowship, uh, uh, teaching the apostles, and then fellowship, koinonia, with this concept of communion, participation, sharing. They participate together. And later on, we will see that this koinonia, this sharing, this participation, is also the communion in the sharing of goods. Not only of spiritual goods, but also material goods. And then the breaking of the bread. The breaking of the bread is the Eucharist. So the Eucharist brings us together. And really, the idea of the Eucharist, that in the Eucharist, the rich and the poor, the old and the young, the men and the women, they are all, all, all one. We sing together, we pray together, we receive the Lord together, we are taught together. And then in the prayers, number four, they pray together. In, at that time, they were pray, their prayers were still shared with the Jews. They were praying at 3 o'clock in the afternoon together with the Jews in the temple because they said it was in the region as Jews. But these are the four uh, activities that would unite us. Teachings, participation, or sharing, or koinonia, Eucharist, and then prayers. So if you want to bring the group, whatever group that is, that can be your catechism group, that be a group of the catechists. That be the group of the BEC. That may be the charismatic group. Try to see if you have these four elements. These four elements. Okay? So, this is the one that promotes koinonia. 1 Corinthians 10.16 The cup of blessing that we bless is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break is it at a sharing in the body of Christ. Now, in the Eucharist, we are one 
because we are united in Jesus Christ. Now, in Jesus Christ, it is the bread, it is the cup, the sharing in Jesus Christ. That's why we are one. So, in... Uh, so the idea of communion, even in, in, uh, in ecumenical uh, dialogue, is always this. Like the spoke of a bicycle. The spoke of a bicycle. In the spoke of the bicycle, the, the nearer you are in the center, the nearer you are to each other. Kung malayo ka sa center, malayo ka rin to each other. But the nearer you come to the center, the nearer you come to one another. And for us, that center is Jesus. That's why if you want to come to each other, go to Jesus, Everybody of us wants to go near to Jesus and we will find each other nearer to each other. That's why in inter-ecumenism, inter we tell people, try to be faithful to Jesus. You as charismatic, you as Methodist, you as Iglesia ni Cristo, be faithful to Jesus. And I think there is no... Uh, no, no controversy in that. Try to know the will of Jesus. Try to know, get the attitude of Jesus. Be close to Him. And if all of us try to be close to Him, we'll find ourselves near to each other. And we'll find each other in Jesus Christ. So this is in the Eucharist. Because I am receiving Jesus he is receiving Jesus, she is receiving Jesus, then we are one in Jesus. So our oneness is not because of common interest only. It's not because of common social status. It's not because of common uh, education or common region. But because of the Lord. Okay? 1 Corinthians 1.10 God is faithful. By Him you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So we are called into the koinonia of His Son. So get all this meaning of koinonia, sharing, participation, no communion, all these ideas. No? So you are called into fellowship of His Son. <coughs> All of us are called to communion, to participation. So this is not just uh, an option. This is a call. This is a vocation. And because God is faithful and He has called us to koinonia, He will give us the means. He gives us the grace. He gives us the energy no, to do it. Because it is a call. He enables those whom He calls. Kaya yung may maganda yung sinasabi, God does not call the capable, but He capacitates those, those whom He calls. God does not call the qualified, but He qualifies those whom He calls. You are qualified for this. No? And when G James and Cephas and John, who were acknowledged pillars, recognized the grace that has been given to me, Paul was writing, they gave to Barnabas and me the right hand of fellowship. So koinonia. Agreeing that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. So, the apostles, the pillars of the church in Jerusalem, Cephas, James, and John, recognizing the grace given to Barnabas and Paul, remember that they came from Antioch, they came to Jerusalem 
for that council meeting, and they found the grace, they were in communion. They were partners, although they have different missions. So it's not because you are partners, you are in fellowship, you do the same thing. No, we can be doing different things. We go to the Gentiles, they go to the Jews, but we are partners in the faith. We share the same faith. So partnership, koinonia, is not uniformity. It's not doing the same thing. Yet, kuminsan ang problema din natin, that we are asking for participation, but we want everybody to do the same thing. Uh, in the same way. No, they have their own ways to do it. Hindi ba? Kayaan mo. Also, his, uh, the grace of God is varied, not only one. No? Second Corinthians, the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And this we still use in the Mass. So this is a Trinitarian greeting. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Holy Spirit, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So the Holy Spirit is the source of communion. Is the source of fellowship. Just think that the Holy Spirit is the power. Is the power of God. And what is God? God is love. Who is God? God is love. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is the power of love. And love unites. Love does not divide. So that source is the Holy Spirit. So be with you all. Yan yung uh, greeting na binigay sa atin. Philemon 1.6 I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. So, this is the greeting of Paul to Philemon, one of the Christians from whom he is asking a favor to accept Onesimus. But he says that the sharing of your faith, the koinonia of your faith. So, the faith that you have now is the same faith now that Onesimus has received. It may become effective. And when is it effective? When you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. Therefore, this koinonia is not just a situation. It's not just a, a state. But it is something that moves us to do something. Perceive all the good that we may do for Jesus. So it's not just as we enjoy the state of camaraderie. The state of being together, we're happy together. No. no. This kind of situation moves us to do all for, for Christ. Okay? 1 John 1.3 So you see, we, were, we are taking just first from the New Testament writings. Wala pa tayo sa Gospels. New Testament writings pa tayo. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. So this is what John was saying. Oh, uh, what God has done in the beginning, what we have heard Him do, we proclaim to you so that you may have fellowship with us. So this kind of proclamation, this kind of evangelization binds us together. But why do we want you to join in our fellowship? Because this fellowship, this koinonia, we have with the Father and His Son. We are communion with the Father and the Son. We want you to join in that communion. That's why we bear witness to you. You say that because I knew before that we, our proclamation is a result of our joy in being with God. And because we are happy to be with God, so we proclaim to the others so that they also can be with us as we are with God. 
Pero kung wala yung basis na yan to be with God, then what's the point? O proclaiming, kaya yung uh, senior kanina dito, na teacher ng religion, na naging atheist, then that you are teaching religion or theology probably just as a culture, just as a knowledge, but it's not really as faith. Because you want them to be a fellowship with us, but at the basis of fellowship na yan, walang iba pa din. Fellowship natin with God. That's why take care of your own communion with God. It will be the one, the reason why you have, why you proclaim, why you teach. Nakakalimutan natin yan. Okay, or sometimes you just do it as a function. It is a fruit of our faith. Okay, so maganda yung text na yan. The fellowship with us and our community <coughs> with the Father and the Son. We say that we have fellowship with Him while we are walking in darkness. We lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus His Son cleanse us from our sin. Sabi natin, we proclaim to you so that we may have koinonia with us because our koinonia is with God and His Son, Jesus. Do we really have koinonia with God, with, with His Son and Jesus? Yes! If we are walking in the light and not in darkness. But if we are walking in darkness, then we are telling a lie. How can you have communion with God? And you are in darkness. But what do you mean in darkness? You are walking in sin. But if you walk in the light, if you in the light, you fellowship one another, and the blood of Jesus is and cleanses us from all sin. And dito na kailangan na tanggalin yung kasalanan. This is the accusation of Jesus to the Jews. You go to the corners of the world in order to make a, a disciple, uh, to make a, a proselyte from the Gentiles. And when they become Jews, you make them as worse as you. Hindi mo siya pinabuti. Ganun na mangyayari if we try to convince others and we are in sin then we will just make them share in our sin. That's why we should walk in the light, not in darkness, not in sin. So, that is uh, sharing in the light means to share in the life of God. In the life of Jesus, in the life of the Spirit. So, dito sa New Testament na tayo. Abide in me as I abide in you. Sinabi ni Jesus sa Last Supper among his disciples. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide is me, in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. In this short passage, we have repeated many times the word abide. In some translations, they translate this as remain. Uh, or live with me. Abide in me as I abide in you. Here, that's a very rich word. To live, live in me as I live in you. Kaya maganda yung kanyang imagery, the imagery of the branch. That the branch has life because it is connected to the vine. Or connected
connected to the tree. And the branch is able to bear fruit because it's connected to the, the body of the tree. Without that connection, it will wither and it will not bear fruit. Keep that always in mind. If we are not connected with Jesus, how can we bear fruit in proclaiming Him? Kaya mahalaga talaga to take care of your own connectedness with God. Uh, mahalaga because you are also directors of catechists and you have to stress this to your catechists. No. You share what you have. You share the faith that you have. If you don't have that faith, what can you share? What can you share? If you don't have that love of God within you, what can you share? That's why do you love God? Apart from me, you can do nothing apart from Jesus. Kaya hirap ng katikista na hindi nagkukumpisal. Hirap ng katikista na hindi nagsisipa, hindi nagdadasal. You don't have a prayer line. You to tell them that. You know? And you have even to pray that you love God. So we have to pray, Lord, I love you. Help me to love you more. And to serve you better. Alam niyo maganda prayer niya. This is also pray every day. Lord, I love you. Help me to love you more and serve you better. I will give to express that love. No? Can you say that sincerely, Lord, I love you. Lord. I love you, Jesus. But make me grow in that love. And serve you better. Because I love you. You just have that in you, and the catechist helping you, malaking kuwem sa iyo. Because it's no longer you who are working, it's Jesus working in you. And bearing much fruit. No? That is hiding in Him. John 59. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be in you. I ask you, you go over this text at malalim na malalim yung text na I hope you believe that every word of the Bible is inspired. It is a bit effective. Yan. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. The love that Jesus has for us is the same love that we receive from the Father. It is a divine love. And you can just imagine what kind of love that is the love of the Father to His only begotten Son is the same love that Jesus gives to us. It's not just a human love. How committed the Father is, the son in, the, is in the Son that is how committed Jesus to us, to us. So He's just telling us, abide in my love, remain in my love. Huwag ka nang umalis. Niyayakap na kita, huwag ka nang umalis. And here, Jesus did not say, I love you because you are good. He did not he does say that He loves you because you serve me, because you are a priest, because you are a sister. No, I love you as you are. Remain in my love. John. And how do we remain in His love? Keep my commandments. You will live, remain in my love. That's why we have to teach the commandments of Jesus. We have to teach the words of Jesus to the people so that they can remain in the love of Jesus. So they are loved and they are not aware of that love. 
mga kapatid, you are loved. Whatever happens, you are loved. So, ask the grace that you become aware of this love. And remain is, as Jesus himself have kept the Father's commandment and abide in his love. And you see how Jesus has been faithful to the will of the Father. That he does nothing except what the Father asks him to do. That sometimes there is a conflict between what he wants and what the Father wants. As in his prayer in Gethsemane. Lord, if possible, let this cup of suffering pass me by. But let not my will, but your will be done. And he followed the will of the Father. Mahalaga, gawin na kagustuhan niya and I abide in his love. At bakit niya sinasabi ito sa atin? So that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. He wants us to be happy, but this happiness is not only a human happiness, it is a divine joy that He wants to share with us His very joy. And it is when we have the joy of God, of Jesus, that our joy will be complete. Many times, people believe that they are happy if there are no problems, if there are no pains. But this is not true. There can be pain and yet you are happy. And yet you are joyful. You yung mga nanay, alam mo yan. No, you are happy with your children or do they cause you pain? So, yan. So, it's not possible na kailangan tanggalin yung problema. But in the joy of God, that's why there are some saints who, in spite of their physical pains, of their sickness, they are so joyful, so happy. And they're even asking for more. Yung mga, may mga stigmata. Uh, hindi madali yan. Na yung sugat ng Panginoon, nasa iyo. But they have the joy of God in them. No? So, iyan i- i- yung inahanap natin. Okay? <laughs> so, I suggest, uh, ang paliwanag ko masyado manipis yan. But the more you, you go into this, make this as part of your lecture today. Repeat and repeat and repeat this word. And you can still go deeper into its meaning. Kasi napakahalap. This is one of the basis ng ating spirituality. Of communion. That's why doing the will of God brings us to communion with Him, and when you have the communion with Him, then we will share that communion to the others. We become agents of communion. Huh? John 17, 19. Still part of the discourse at the last uh, discourse in the, the last supper. As for their sakes, this is now the prayer of Jesus, the priestly prayer of Jesus. For their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also of those, on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Another uh, passage very pregnant with me. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. For their sakes, I make myself holy. For their sakes, I preach the truth so that they may be sanctified in the truth. I hope you also do have the same sentiment of God. For the sake of my people, I sanctify myself. I make myself holy. <coughs> and how do you make yourself holy? 
by loving God, by doing His commands, by knowing His will. So that they also may be sanctified. So that's the attitude of Jesus. That's just what we are attitude. And I pray not only for this, but those who will believe in me through their word. First of all, let us thank the Lord. He has prayed for us. We have believed because of the words of the apostles. After 2,000 years, our belief is the same as their belief. So that they may be all one. And this is the prayer of Jesus at the Last Supper. Father, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, may they also be in us. So the oneness the fellowship that God wants is the same fellowship of the Trinity. It's the same fellowship of the... It's not just a camaraderie. It's not just a barkadahan. It's not just a good feeling that we have with one another. But the same oneness in God is also our oneness here with us. That's why we are being asked this year and the subsequent years, the declare ng CBCP that Trinity Sunday is the Sunday of the parish as community. And this year, Trinity Sunday is June 11th. So make activities in the parish to show that you are a communion of communities. And every year, no, we celebrate the communion of communities. In Trinity Sunday, because it's the same communion that is asked from us. Impossible na ating uh, communion, tulad communion ng, ng uh, Father and Holy Spirit. Impossible. Ano ang episode? Pinagdasal ni Jesus. And ang prayer niya, magyayari. He prayed for it. But we have to make ourselves available to it. And why so? So that the world may believe that you sent me. And so many people still do not believe that Jesus has been sent by God because Christians are disunited. That's why the importance of ecumenism. <coughs> so our proclamation will always be ineffective and our proclamation is God is that Jesus will be sent by God, that Jesus is Son of God, will not be believable if they don't see Christian unity. But when we speak about Christian unity, it's not only the unity among the Catholics, the Methodists, the Presbyterian, the born again, but also the communion, the communion, the unity in our parish. Then how can the people believe that you are a community of faith, a community of love? That's why it is a Christian imperative that you work for unity. And the work for unity is constant. No? hindi tayo magpapabaya. Mas madali pang magawa ng simbahan na ba to? When you build a church, no, a building, once the cement is poured, it remains there. No? Pero ang community, it has to work day by day. Ngayon, magandang sama natin. Bukas sa gaaway na. No? Yung magpasensyahan, pagunawa. It's every day, every So that the world may believe. So another important passage to be part of your uh, lecture divina so that you can get this full meaning. An experience of oneness in Acts 2.44 All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as they as any had so this was an experience of unity in the community that they were able to share their material goods. My dear friends, if we cannot even share our material goods, how do we suppose that we can share spiritual goods? Hindi ka pagkabigay ng pera mo? 
magbibigay ka pa ng pananampalataya mo? Yung pera mo nga, hindi mo maibigay? And you know, in our cases, there are many poor people because there are rich people who are very rich. And they don't share. If we just share enough, there will be no one in need. No one in need. Kaya yung hamon sa atin din, not to share more. At ang sabi share more, start with tithing. <coughs> 10%. You cannot share the 10%. You have the 90%. Kaya mga katikista, pwede ba kayo muna mag-tie? Mag-tie is already in the parish because they are not free. And then you can tell the others, we can do that. Nagagawa ko, nagagawa nyo rin yan. But if you cannot even bear witness to that, Yes, Father. No, how can you claim to uh, invite others to go tithing? Because... At huwag natin sa hindi ating kaya. Ay, nagagawa ka 